As the Denver Broncos prepare for Sunday's matchup against the Miami Dolphins, we're going to take a look at the tail of the tape. How does the Broncos offense fare against the Dolphins defense from a statistical standpoint? How does the Broncos defense stack up against the Miami Dolphins offense from a statistical standpoint? Well, you're going to get all that and much more and a brand new cup of coffee on this morning's episode, Good Morning Broncos. What's up, Broncos country? Welcome to another episode of GMB, your daily bite-sized Denver Broncos conversation with a cup of coffee here on Mile High Sports. Mile High Sports represents every team every day here in Colorado. So if you're looking for abs coverage, nuggets coverage, Rockies coverage, and of course your daily Broncos coverage, you're going to get that here on the Mile High Sports YouTube channel. So make sure you do us a favor, hit that subscribe button down below so you never miss out on all the coverage that we have bringing you here for Colorado's sports team. Today's episode of the show is brought to you by our friends over there at Superbook Sports. We'll tell you about them a little bit later on and what you can do to get involved in the action here this weekend for the Denver Broncos against the Miami Dolphins. Denver heading into this matchup as six and a half point underdogs on the road. We know how those Eastern time zone games go for them historically. It's been a little bit of a thorn on the side of the Broncos in recent memory, but can Denver buck the trend this week under Sean Payton after an 0-2 start? Could they get a big road win against the Dolphins here? Well, let's take a look really at a tail of the tape here, right? And, and what we like to do here, this comes from the Broncos weekly release packet. It gives us some insight where do the Broncos rank offensively? Where do they rank defensively? Special teams, what are some key statistics in terms of season leaders on the year? We're going to use all that to break through today's episode of the show. So first and foremost, I think we have to talk about generally where this team is at as a whole. And we're looking at two margins here, some general margins. We're talking about turnover margin and time of possession here when we look at these two teams. Now for the Denver Broncos, right now they are tied for 19th in the league with a turnover margin and a differential of minus one here. Now, what we mean by that, okay, well, for the most part, Denver's done a good job protecting the football. However, week two against the Washington Commanders, Russell Wilson had a fumble. He also had an interception. So through two weeks, you're going to see that this rating right here, as we go through and we do this every single week on GMB, it's going to fluctuate almost every single week. It's going to be a little bit different, right? Because the sample size is getting larger, more statistical outputs are coming in. So Denver's rankings right now in some categories might be very high. It might be very low, but it's not going to define how the rest of the season is going to go unless that sample size continues to be at the variance of which it already is. So it's an exciting thing to maybe look forward to, seeing how it changes. So there is that in terms of Denver's time of possession per game. They're ranked 21st right now in the National Football League, averaging 29 minutes and 12 seconds of possession per game. And I think one factor, Denver has ran the ball pretty well. Even though they don't have a lot of rushing yards overall in their statistical output through two weeks, they've ran the ball well, which contributes to time of possession. And then when you look at where Denver has at, has been, at, I think last week, you know, in the second half, they got dominated in terms of times of possession by the Washington Commanders, who went on a 32-9 to scoring run from that second quarter all the way through the fourth quarter there. Denver's going to have to adjust here. And look, you can't make those same mistakes against the Miami Dolphins team because they will carve you up. When you look at where the Miami Dolphins are here, they're also tied for 19th with Denver with a minus one turnover margin at this point as well. They're also 23rd right now in the NFL in terms of average time of possession at 28 minutes and 49 seconds. But here's the kicker here. If you look at what they're able to do against the Los Angeles Chargers in week one, you look at what they're able to do on Sunday night football week two against the New England Patriots. They're good at just getting some explosive plays and scoring quickly. And that obviously impacts time of possession. So while it may look like they're bottom ranked in terms of bottom 10 in the NFL in that department, but they're still putting up a lot of production on the offensive side of the ball. So it kind of factors into the equation here. So let's get into an outlook of Denver Broncos offense against the Miami Dolphins defense from a statistical standpoint in terms of ranking. Where do they sit right now? We'll dive into the Broncos offense here. Overall, net yards per game here for Denver at 329.5, which has them at 16th right now in the National Football League. So they're putting up yards in production. And obviously, I think this would be an even better statistic if Denver didn't have those spurts in the second half where they went punt and they had a turnover, another punt, and the commanders obviously maintained time of possession. Denver is trending in the right direction on the offensive side of the ball. There's a couple of kinks they're going to have to work out, as we've discussed here all week long on GMB. But 
329.5 yards per game is a good sign in the right direction here for Denver through two weeks. I expect that number to get up to maybe 350, 360 at some point, maybe at the median part of the season here, which means that Denver would have a top 10 offense if we look at it from that standpoint. So I think it's something to keep an eye on. Now, you're looking at this as well for Denver uh, in terms of where they're at in yards per play. They're averaging 5.5 yards per play, which is good for seventh right now in the National Football League. That's a great sign there. We'll tell you where the Miami Dolphins are on the flip side of it. But when you look at where Denver's at in terms of net yards and yards per play, looking at it on the flip side for the Miami Dolphins defense where they're allowing things, Miami is allowing 360.5 yards per per game on the ground through the air, which gives them a 24th ranking right now in the National Football League. Now, granted, look, that defense is still playing pretty good in Miami. And even though in that first week they surrendered a lot of yards and a lot of points to the Los Angeles Chargers, they did a much better job against the New England Patriots on Sunday Night Football. As we've mentioned, the sample size of two games is very low here. Their yards per play allowed at this point here is 4.9, which is 11th in the NFL. And this is really from Vic Fangio's defense where he predicates on, we're going to prevent the, the big explosive plays from happening. We're going to make you throw it short. We're going to rally and tackle. That's his identity on the defensive side of the ball and then creating pressure to force quarterbacks into some tough spots. That's what we've seen historically from Vic Fangio. So something to keep an eye on here for the Broncos this weekend against the Miami Dolphins. Now, I think this next metric, we're going to talk about points per game. All right, Denver right now, believe it or not, folks, even though they scored 16 points in that week one loss against the Raiders, Denver right now is averaging 24.5 points per game, which gives them a ranking for tied for 14th right now in the National Football League. You look at the Miami Dolphins in terms of their defense, in terms of points per game allowed. Right now, they're allowing 25.5 points per game, which is tied for 19th in the NFL. You look at other metrics in terms of net rushing yards per game, Denver 15th with 108 yards average on the ground, passing yards per game 12th right now, 221.5 yards per game through the air. On the flip side, you look at the Miami Dolphins. They're allowing 160 yards on the ground, which is ranked right now bottom in the NFL, 28th out of 32 here at this point in terms of net rushing yards allowed per game. So for the Broncos in this game particular, it should be to come out and run the ball with Javante Williams, run the ball with Samaj P. Ryan, get Jaleel McLaughlin involved, because if you're gashing the Miami Dolphins defense, which has a wide variety of talented players on that front seven, also at the safety position, guys that come up against the run, you can capitalize and make some big plays in this game and open things up in the passing game if you can get the run game going. And that plays into time of possession and things like that. So I like where they're at there. They're also allowing over 200 yards per game through the air. And a lot of that is skewed because Justin Herbert in week one launched, you know, they put up 32 points and they obviously, um, the Chargers lost that game. I think it was 34 or 32 here, but there was a lot of production from Herbert in the passing game against them. Obviously, you know, Jalen Ramsey, their key offseason acquisition. He had a knee surgery. He's on IR. He'll be back at some point this season, but Maybe it's a good thing that Denver is getting this Miami game done early on, even though they're an undefeated team right now, 2-0 and heading into this matchup. And nobody right now, like I said, six-and-a-half-point underdogs here for Denver. On paper, nobody's giving Denver a chance at this game, but we could see a surprise here this week. Um, overall, I think some other metrics that we need to talk about. Okay, hey, sacks allowed by the Broncos offense right now. They are tied for 28th in the NFL. They've allowed nine sacks, and seven of those came in Sunday's loss against the Washington Commanders. Denver's going to have to shore that up. Some protection issues on the outside. You're going to have to get the ball to your hands quicker. Russ is going to have to protect the football. These factors in, you know, play into it as well. And then also on third down, Denver is ranked 16th right now, 39.1%. Denver's doing a better job moving the ball and converting, picking up first downs overall. Still some struggles a little bit on third down here, but that was really predicated off of the second half against the Commanders where Denver just simply went backwards consistently in that second half there. Red zone percentage, Denver's ranked 57.1%. This is where they want to clean things up a little bit here going forward. Denver has had some really good looks in the red zone, haven't been able to capitalize. You look at, I think, the, the Raiders game that where they had to settle for a field goal late in that game. That impacted, I think, that rating a little bit here. So we'll see if Denver can adjust. Now, I think on the flip side where you look at the Miami Dolphins defense, right now they're ranked 30th in the NFL in allowing third down 
conversions. 53.3% of opponents' attempts on third down have con been converted to move the chains for a first down here. So they're struggling a little bit on that. I'm not sure if it's because they're hyper-aggressive and teams are capitalizing on getting the ball out quickly against the blitz. You look at the red zone percentage right now, they're almost dead last there in, in percentage allowed there. They're allowing opponents to score an 85.7% of their red zone attempts and which is a little unorthodox from a Vic Fangio defense. We're usually accustomed to seeing being a top five or even a number one unit there because it forces guys to tighten up there. And he's usually gotten really good at utilizing his personnel in the red zone. However, as we've said, these statistics can be a little skewed because of the fact that, Hey, it is two weeks in the NFL season. That's where these rankings are predicated off of. I think if we maybe fast forward five or six weeks, I think we'll get a more telling sign to where these teams are, both offensively, defensively. Though for Denver, the Dolphins' rankings won't necessarily matter. It's going to matter where Denver's at on that side of things here. But Rocco's country coming up here in just a moment. We're going to get into our defensive rankings. Denver's defense against the Miami Dolphins' offense from a statistical standpoint. What does the tell of the tape? What do the numbers tell us? We're going to get that on today's episode, GMB. This episode of the show is brought to you by our friends over there at Superbook Sports. Why bet with the big boys this football season? Instead, try your hand with the local book. That's Superbook Sports this fall. Superbook Sports is the book next door. Just a dedicated team of the best odds makers in Las Vegas, making sure that you get the best prices and parlays available anywhere. And now Superbook will give you a bonus of up to $250 when you sign up and wager on the same day and use the promo code Mile High. So bet with the best and use promo code Mile High this football season with Superbook Sports. Visit Superbook.com for terms and conditions. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. All right, Broncos country, let's look at our tail of the tape. Denver's defense, how does it match up statistically against the Miami Dolphins offense? Hey, hey, hey. Well, it's a little interesting here. First off, let's look at the Dolphins de uh, offense and where they're at here. Right now, in terms of overall net yards per game, through the air, on the ground, they are the number one ranked offense, averaging 462.5 yards per game in combination on the ground through the air. And that's really led by Tua Tungo Vailoa. I mean, he exploded in week one for 466 yards. Tyreek Hill had over 200 yards receiving in that game against the Chargers. They know how to put up points. They know how to capitalize on big-time explosive plays. And what did the Broncos do last week against the Commanders? They allowed too many explosive chunk plays downfield, too many penalties. Denver through two weeks has 12 penalties on the defensive side of the ball alone, and that has converted and kept opposing offensive drives alive. You cannot do that against this Miami Dolphins team or else it is going to get ugly very quickly here. And on top of that, they're very good at getting the ball to Tua Tungo Vailoa's hands very quickly. They have explosive playmakers at running back with Raheem Mostert, with Tyreek Hill. Jalen Waddell is in concussion protocol. We'll see what type of progress he makes throughout the week. But if he's not able to go, okay, there's Braxton Berrios. There's former Bronco River Craycraft who has seemingly found his footing with the Miami Dolphins with Mike McDaniel. They're averaging 7.3 yards per play, which is is also good for first right now in the National Football League. So it means that they're generating chunk yardage. They're doing it quickly. It's quick hitting. It's the short to intermediate stuff. And it's taking me a couple occasional shots downfield because of the weapons that they have here. Mike McDaniel has done a tremendous job with this Miami Dolphins team offensively, defensively getting Vic Fangio in place. They have the personnel, but they are capitalizing on every opportunity in front of them. Granted, I, I think everything that we're talking about here statistically for their defense is skewed because of that, that opener against the Los Angeles Chargers here. So something to keep an eye on. And right now, they're also third right now in the National Football League in points per game. They're averaging 30 points per game so far through two weeks of play Big explosive plays. Denver allowing over 35 points last week to the Commanders. When you look at that and you look at how Denver played and you compare it to what Miami has been able to do, it doesn't give you much confidence that, hey, Denver's going to be in a good spot here. Denver could stop the Miami Dolphins. They're going to have to go out and they're going to have to prove it here. But here's the thing. Tua Tungo Vailoa against the Blitz gets the ball out of his hands so quickly. It's almost schemed and game planned here by Mike McDaniel to help mitigate his quarterback not having to take too many shots. So if you're playing this off coverage, which Denver has been doing this off soft zone coverage, sometimes man, you're really hoping that you can react quickly and make a break on the football. If not, Tua is just going to carve you up in the short to intermediate because he's very accurate in that standpoint. So Denver and Vance Joseph, they're going to have the work cut out for them, and I'm very curious to see what they're going to be able to do here overall. So we talked about net yards per game, yards per play, and points per game for the Dolphins' offense. What does it look like on the flip side for Denver's defense in those categories? 
Well, right now, Denver's allowing 324.5 yards per game through two weeks, which is 16th right now in the NFL. In terms of yards per play, they're 19th, allowing 5.4. So just a couple of spots there before Miami hits that 7.3 yard mark there. Almost a two-yard differential when we look there. Points per game right now, Denver right now is, is ranked in the bottom 10 in the NFL. They're tied for 23rd overall, allowing over 26 points per game. So even then, like Miami, their average is 30 per, per game. Even if they get 26, Denver's in trouble at that point because Denver has had a really hard time stopping you know, explosive teams downfield. And I think Sam Howell, a young, uh, you know, young quarterback that we saw last week, he just found confidence. He started throwing shots downfield into windows that you don't, sometimes don't want to test and you don't want to dare as a young quarterback, but he had the confidence to do it. Tua is a smart football player. Now, granted, what you know, people can talk about him versus Justin Herbert, the comparisons of the draft and things like that. Tua has been ascending, right? And I know there's always questions from the Miami Dolphins fan base week in and week out about whether or not he's going to be their franchise guy. He's doing a lot of good stuff right now to put the Dolphins in a position to be successful, and I think that's also part of the good coaching that they have going on right there. So let's get to some other important metrics right now in terms of the, the Miami Dolphins offense. You know, they're really led by Raheem Mostert right now. They're averaging 107.5 yards on the ground. Raheem Mostert uh, through two weeks has 158 yards rushing. Overall, he's clocked in, I think, one run of over 22 miles per hour, one that's been faster than Tyreek Hill. So he's got legitimate speed. If he gets to the outside or you get him involved in the screen game, he can hurt the Broncos in this game specifically. We look at passing yards per game. Ironically enough, Tua Tonga Bailoa, a guy they say cannot throw the football. The Miami Dolphins are the number one passing offense right now in the NFL, averaging 355 yards per game. You look at where Denver's at on that standpoint, they're allowing 233 yards per game through the air, which is good for 21st in the NFL from a defensive standpoint. They're allowing 91.5 yards on the ground, which is 11th right now in the National Football League. And they only have one takeaway. They've only generated one interception so far here this season. They're going to have to find a way to get more takeaways. They do have four sacks on the year. Miami, you look at them defensively, they have seven sacks on the year. I mean, and right now, too, they have six players with one sack, and then they have Jalen Phillips and, and Bethel, who each have half a sack combined. So for them, they've been able to get up to quarterback in two weeks here. Denver gave up seven quarterback sacks last week, 14 quarterback hits. The Dolphins are going to try to send a lot of pressure at Russell Wilson this upcoming week. So we'll see how things fare overall here. In terms of maybe some team leaders here as we close out today's episode of Good Morning Broncos, Tua Tonga Vailoa through two weeks has 715 yards passing. Russell Wilson, in comparison, has 485 rushing yards. I mean, they have a lot of their workload goes through Raheem Mostert. He has 158 yards on the ground, as I mentioned. Then they have Salvin Ahmed, who's got 24 grounds. And then they have Eric Ezukanma, who's got uh, 22 yards on the ground. Denver's leading rusher right now is Javante Williams, 96 yards on the ground for him. And then Russell Wilson, ironically enough, is the second leading rusher, 57 yards on the ground for him. And then Samaje P. Ryan at 45. Denver is going to have to buy into the running game a little bit more. And that was what we were told by Sean Payton. The identity for this football team was going to be to run the football to set up the pass. Well, they did that. And then they went away from the run. Now, granted, when you lose the lead in that third quarter, it makes a little bit sense why you go away from running the football. But it doesn't mean that when you're up 21-3, you can't run the rock with Javante, with Samaje, hit those inside runs and protect it. I mean, obviously, Russell Wilson's fumble led to a negative outcome here for Denver in this last game. But I, you're going to have to get more production in the rushing department here. If you have this offensive line that you have revamped and these guys are healthy right now, you have to figure out how to run the ball. If you cannot do that consistently enough, it is going to be a long season here for Denver. Receiving yards, Tyreek Hill leads them with 255. Now 200 of that, obviously, I think it was 215, if I'm not mistaken, came in that first game against the LA Chargers. Jalen Waddell, obviously, with 164. He had a big week this past week against the uh, New England Patriots on Sunday Night Football. He is obviously in concussion protocol. And then River Craycraft is the third leading receiver with 74 yards through two games there. Denver, Marvin Mims, 122 yards, 113 of that. Came last week against the Washington Commanders. Cortland Sutton, he's got 98 yards. And then Brandon Johnson's got 97. Jerry Judy made his return last week. But here's the thing. I think these are things we also have to watch for. This is a homecoming for so many Broncos players coming back to Florida who played their high school ball there. You look at Jerry Judy, Brandon Johnson, Patrick Sertan, Justin Simmons. They're all coming home. Florida is home. It's where these guys played their high school ball. It's where they grew up. And so I think we have to highlight that because there's always this different 
external motivation that you have about like, hey, I'm going back home. I want to put on a show. I've got a lot of my family who lives there. And I know all these guys have tons of family that live in Florida that are going to be at the game here this Sunday. So something to keep an eye on there. Um, aside from all that, I mean, Denver and Miami are tied in terms of interceptions. Xavier Howard has one. Kareem Jackson has one. No other players on each of these teams have an interception so far this season. You look at the sack department, we already mentioned that Miami's got six different players with one sack. And then you also have for Denver, Jonathan Cooper leading the way with two sacks. Nick Benito, Randy Gregory, each having a sack apiece here. And then Javon Holland, the safety for them, man. He is playing terrific football. He leads the team in tackles with 25. Denver's leading tackler is Josie Jewell at 15. And then Justin Simmons is at 14. Then there's three players who have 11 tackles each in totality there but this is a defense that's aggressive they go after and they tackle and they have them i mean you look at their top five guys we mentioned holland at 25 they have elliott with 17 tackles um they have baker and kohau he's they've got 13 tackles each and then you've got xavier and howard who's got 12 tackles then they have three players who have 11 tackles so maybe that's a product of them being on the field sometimes too long but this is a team that rallies to the football and gets after guys Denver is going to have their work cut out for them here this Sunday. But this was our tell of the tape here on Good Morning Broncos. Go ahead and go pour yourself another cup of coffee. We appreciate you for rocking with us here today on GMB. We'll be back tomorrow because we're going to have more insight for from today's practice in Dove Valley. We'll have some recap. We'll have some locker room footage, some interviews from players, and you can get that exclusively on tomorrow's brand new episode, Good Morning Broncos. Broncos country, we appreciate you. We'll see you next time.